All refugees report to handling Station 1. The depressing sound of feet shuffling echoed throughout the station. Human soldiers watched and guarded the seemingly never-ending mass of helpless civilians trying to flee the compound. I was one of those refugees. My home, Janoxla, was raised by a compound war fleet. I was one of only 1,500 to make it off the surface. Over 2.5 billion were bombarded before they could escape on the space elevators. Humanity, Terra, was the closest safe harbor for refugees in the local star cluster. Janoxla was the fifth planet to fall. In the time it took to evacuate to Terran space, another four would be completely raised. Only the tenth planet, Genox Prime, was able to put up some resistance and allow significant amounts to escape the surface. Of the million who made it off the planet, only around 100 were able to trickle back into the galaxy. Everyone else would be killed, but I knew none of this at the time. We were all tired and scared, hopeful that human neutrality would be respected. For more than a millennium, humankind stayed neutral throughout every conflict. Humanity grew incredibly rich as a result. Everyone knew investments in humanity would be incredibly stable. Human industry, technology, and their economy were all the stuff of legend. I truly thought that given the human reputation, the compound would stop at the long-respected human border. When alarms began screaming, I realized I was mistaken. A missile had slammed into the loading docks of the station. It was only by standing close to a human soldier that I survived. In his quick thinking, he grabbed onto me and threw me to the ground. When the atmosphere and everything inside it began to be vented out of the station, he held me in place. I was one of twenty who survived the decompression. Once the soldier realized what was going on, he dragged me to a nearby airlock. His magnetic boots were the only thing that saved me from death that day. His own life, too, for that matter. The only reason I survived was a pair of fucking boots. We gotta move fast. Ready? The soldier slammed his fist on the door release, and the two of us bolted towards the life pods nearby. We joined a large group inside a small escape pod. All of them were human. The doors closed only seconds after I got on. Once again, my life was saved by the slimmest of margins. The view? It can only be described as surreal. The beauty of Neptune, its swirling clouds and torrential storms of blue, horribly contrasted by the station exploding before my very eyes. So many were killed in such a short time, it's overwhelming to think that I would have been among the dead. Should have been among the dead. So many times. Yet I survived, my eyes filled with the vision of a lone human corvette fighting an entire compound fleet. The soldier who saved me could only look on in rage. Give him hell, Olympia! The vessel fought valiantly against the horde. Engines firing with rage, the little ship darted around compound fire. It decimated three enemies with overwhelming kinetic firepower, ripping massive holes into the sleek and angular vessels assaulting my kind. Three compound ships were torn to ribbons, made into unrecognizable heaps of twisted alloy. The ship continued its maneuvers for what seemed like hours before it was finally hit by a compound plasma charge. The entire stern of the vessel was melted clean off, the proud and powerful engines turned to slag in an instant. The little ship stopped maneuvering, but couldn't stop its momentum. The melted hulk plowed past the compound fleet into the greater expanse of the void. Whatever crew remaining decided to fight until their last breath, firing defiant railgun volleys through the ever-furthering void. They managed a few superficial hits before they faded out of visual range. Without the little ship to draw the compound's fire, we became their hash one priority target. Plasma charges missed our puny vessel by mere meters, melting away our armor and noticeably increasing the temperature inside our doomed craft. Just then, a message seemed to reverberate through the very void itself. Human neutrality is non-negotiable. Prepare for eviction. As if appearing out of nothingness, an entire human battle fleet emerged from the void. The newfound firepower bore down upon the compound like a hammer to an anvil. Railgun rounds slammed through the hulls of vessels who'd only just finished purging my planet. Massive chunks of metal were ripped out of the compound vessels one by one, after such mighty blows, they simply ceased to fight back. Transformed by human lead into hulking wrecks, completely gutted and devoid of any means to retaliate. 
Compound ships attempted to reorganize, firing blind volleys of plasma and missiles into the general region of human vessels. Every shot either completely missed or was absorbed by ludicrously powerful human shielding. The humans began their second assault, even more awe-inspiringly devastating than the last. Massive flocks of missiles arose from massive human ships like an angry swarm of bees. Cutting through compound ships like a hot knife through butter, the destruction was almost hard to watch. Almost. My heart was conflicted by the slaughter. These compound scum had just finished murdering my entire home planet. Yet there was something so pathetic about the resistance they could muster. It was like watching a field of grass being cut by a scythe, completely helpless and unable to defend themselves. Some compound vessels tried to flee into FTL, only to crash into an invisible net of unimaginable proportions. I saw the telltale blinking of FTL drives spooling up, appearing successful for multiple seconds. After ten seconds, light caught up to current events, and the ships slammed into the human wall, exploding in a vibrant display of blues, whites, oranges, and red. The majesty of the destruction swallowed my mind and distracted me from the gravity of my situation. The killing blow was executed by the massive human battleships. Limitless beams of white exited the spinal mount of human ships. They connected with their targets, similarly massive compound supercarriers, architects of the destruction of species. I doubted the human's capability to destroy such a ship for less than a second. For that was the time it took the beam to claw its way through the entire supercarrier. Each surviving compound vessel was gutted from bow to stern in a matter of milliseconds. I'd never felt more powerless and insignificant in my life. I haven't felt such a feeling since. My entire species had almost been eradicated by the compound. This single human fleet cut them down like a field of wheat. I jolted in fear when the human soldier placed his hand on my shoulder. You're safe now. His voice showed me that he too felt puny in the face of such madness. His words were as much reassurance to himself as they were to me, yet I was able to derive some comfort from them. Hundreds of compound vessels were turned to molten heaps of scrap in minutes, and I couldn't truly process it. I owe my life to the humans. I just wish they would have helped us sooner. Testimony of Talon II, lone survivor of the compound assault on Genoxla. Only around 100 Genox citizens survived the war. The compound nearly succeeded in the total eradication of their species. Human peacekeeping actions as a direct result of Talon's confirmation of genocide turned human opinion towards intervention in the war. The compound government was tried and convicted of genocide, and a new interim government was established by the galactic nations. Humanity now views intervention in conflict as its duty in the galaxy. Human interventionists have stopped a total of 97 interstellar conflicts to date. The guns of Terra reign supreme, stopping conflicts within minutes and preventing conflicts with the mere acknowledgement of their existence.